Good morning, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing as we have a classic bimodal tornado setup that's about to unfold later on today. We did have those supercell storms that developed last night uh, just before midnight, moving through the Oklahoma City Metro, South Oklahoma City Metro with those severe thunderstorm warnings. And that cluster, that mode of convection continues now across central Arkansas, and the, that convection could reinvigorate later on this morning as they move into northeastern Arkansas, western Tennessee, southeastern Missouri, into western Kentucky. That's the southern mode, and a bimodal severe weather setup is one that has two target areas, two modes, and usually you get one off to the north. Uh, that's associated with a little bit lesser uh, instability and greater wind shear. And then you get one off to the south that's associated with greater instability and still uh, sufficient wind shear to have supercell storms and even a tornado threat. And uh, that's why you often will see these large warm sectors split into two different target areas with a northern target area, northern cluster of uh, tornadoes or severe weather reports. And that's going to happen over Ohio today. And you can definitely see the short-range models picking up on the bimodal nature of this severe weather event with the southern mode basically extending from Little Rock through the Missouri Boot Hill region into western Kentucky and western Tennessee and then the northern mode up into western and central Ohio there. So let's first uh, take a look at uh, the uh, storms that are happening now. These are sub-severe storms. Uh, this is just to the west of the Russellville area. You can still see some um, supercell structure happening here even though the storm is just a little bit uh, elevated. Uh, you can see that its outflow is advancing a little bit out ahead of this storm, but still above uh, that stable layer, you can definitely see a supercell storm with a hook-like appendage on the southwest side. You can even see this forward flank gust front, a gradient there in the reflectivity. So this storm is going to continue heading off to the east, and this cluster certainly could reinvigorate later on this morning. I'm watching this very closely as it moves off to the northeast. Right now, I'm in the Little Rock area near Conway, so my plan is to head off to the northeast, uh, out here in northeastern Arkansas, uh, probably near the Walnut Ridge to Jonesboro area, and then wait for this convective mode to intensify as it approaches, approaches northeastern Arkansas there. Uh, so definitely uh, keeping an eye on that mode. I do think that it could reinvigorate. Uh, certainly looking at uh, the uh, bimodal nature of this setup, you can see that the uh, low-level jet even has two distinct pops. You can see that maximum up there, central into western Ohio, uh, southwesterlies, west-southwesterly 850s in excess of uh, 30 knots. And then you can also see a little subtle 850 low, uh, enhancing the 850 winds down into western Tennessee, into central Arkansas with that southern mode. Both of those uh, uh, enhanced areas of low-level jet are going to be associated uh, with an increase in the low-level shear as well. And you can see plenty of surface base instability. This is a wrap forecast at 20Z. Uh, so this is about 3 p.m. Central Time. And you can see that it intensifies uh, that storm along the frontal boundary. It might even be that storm near Russellville. It's going to take a while for that thing to reach Central Arkansas. And uh, that instability is building in from the south. And once it reaches that storm, then I do expect it to reinvigorate. And you can also see a couple of those renegades into western Tennessee, western Kentucky, Missouri boot heel region as well. Uh, those renegades could uh, be the main uh, target uh, this afternoon. And it does look like the low-level shear is still going to be relatively um, uh, modest, even associated with those 30-knot uh, uh, maximum maxima there in the low-level jet. Uh, so I don't expect this to be a massive outbreak, certainly, uh, but there is a bimodal tornado threat. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center has two 5% probability areas that uh, encompass uh, the, uh, the two different modes. So let's take a, lo a look at a little bit in more detail at these uh, forecast models here, at the short range models, uh, the convective allowing models, the uh, three kilometer NAM and the HRRR. And boy, the HRRR has done pretty well here uh, during this second season, during the fall event, especially out in, uh, into Oklahoma. Uh, certainly uh, has done very, very favorably uh, with these uh, recent outbreak. It, it even uh, depicted uh, the uh, southwest Oklahoma mode that happened last Sunday when the Clinton tornado happened just on the northeast side of Clinton. Uh, did a very good job showing the evolution of those supercells across southwestern Oklahoma into central Oklahoma as well. 
Uh, the moderate risk uh, storm prediction center was off to the north, northwestern Oklahoma and the southwestern Kansas. And the one time that the storm prediction center is not hugely uh, influenced by the HRRR model, the HRRR scores big and is absolutely nailed uh, the Sunday event from southwestern Oklahoma into central Oklahoma. It also did a very good job on Tuesday's event. Actually, Tuesday was at moderate risk across northwestern Oklahoma into southwestern Kansas. It was the Tuesday event that we had the Clinton tornado as well. Sunday was the previous uh, HP supercell that moved from the Cooperton area through the Wichita Mountains, eventually impacting the South Oklahoma City Metro. Uh, but the HRRR did a good job on both of those events, uh, did a good job bringing that HP supercell right into the Oklahoma City Metro on Sunday. And then on October 12th, the following Tuesday, uh, the moderate risk was issued across northwestern Oklahoma to southwestern Kansas. And the HRRR did an incredible job depicting that evolution of the renegade storms from southwestern Oklahoma into central Oklahoma, even developing in far northwestern Texas. That Seymour storm that we were talking about that developed down near Seymour, uh, Texas, actually crossed the Red River, and that one ended up being that strong supercell that produced a tornado that crossed Highway 62 there, uh, just to the northeast of the Snyder uh, area, 62 west of India, Homa in uh, Oklahoma. But here you can see the low-level jet storm relative helicity here. So you can see the two different maxima. There's this maxima across central Ohio, and this is the forecast at 22Z just because it really showed the bimodal nature of this setup. And uh, this uh, area of 150 plus is a little bit enhanced in the wake of a supercell storm or you get some northerlies. But in general, you've got about 100, maybe 125 in spots um, of zero to one kilometer shear. That could be just enough to uh, develop a tornado threat. The zero to one kilometer EHI uh, shows the southern mode a little bit more favorable, but that's because of the effect of surface based cape. So you have a lot more instability down here with the southern mode. A little bit greater wind shear across the northern mode, but not enough to make it a high shear, low cape type of a setup across Ohio. Uh, but here in uh, south and western Tennessee, we can take a look at the quick forecast photograph. Let me get rid of my head out of there too. And it does show a, a decent hodograph. Um, it only has about 20 knots there a kilometer above the ground. So you really need that 30 knots to bulge out that hodograph to have a robust tornado potential. But you do have these due east storm motions at about 35 knots because of the bulk shear out here. Largely unidirectional profile being indicated by the HRRR down to the south into western Tennessee, at least by 22Z. A little bit earlier, you might have some more backed winds there, but it does look like it is quite veered, uh, the uh, low-level winds, the surface winds, largely out of a westerly direction. You're really going to need those south-southwesterly winds, I think, to get a robust tornado threat, but sometimes these veered profiles will end up happening out here in eastern Arkansas. Thermodynamically, no problems, no limitations at all. A lot of low-level cape here uh, with uh, low 80s over low 70s type of a profile. Uh, big cape here as well, the uh, dashed line there being the par theoretical parcel temperature. Red line is the environmental temperature. So wherever that hot air balloon that is the uh, theoretical parcel, wherever it's warmer than that red line, it's going to continue to rise until it reaches the equilibrium level, basically the tops of those storms. But you can see a lot of dry air coming in in the mid-levels of the troposphere here, creating an abundance of instability ahead of this advancing cold front. And there are going to be some pockets of decent shear uh, overall on a synoptic scale. We do have a bimodal setup with Ohio having the more favorable uh, profiles and down here into eastern Arkansas and western Tennessee. Let's take a look uh, uh, at the Ohio maximum. And you still do have these small photographs out there. Skinnier cape in the northern mode. Uh, but you do have a little bit more uh, back to those low-level winds uh, out of a due southwesterly direction at about 10 to 15 knots for those surface winds. So you do have a little bit more directional shear uh, between the surface and the mid-levels of the troposphere. Uh, but still, um, a relatively modest low-level jet is likely going to preclude a major tornado outbreak, certainly across these reg uh, this region. But overall, the HRRR, at least when you look at the composite indices, seems to like this southern mode a little better. And there is more favorable zero to three kilometer wind shear uh, rather than the zero to one kilometer layer uh, because of the veered nature 
uh, of the uh, low-level flow, unidirectional nature of the low-level flow as well. But it looks like at about 21Z, uh, the 0 to 3 kilometer shear and instability is maximized back all the way into central Arkansas for that uh, Russellville storm that's moving just to the north of I-40 right now. It is forecast to intensify as it reaches this more favorable environment across central Arkansas. So we'll have to keep an eye on this southern mode as well. Look at that. Uh, but we also have these renegades developing out near the Missouri boot heel into western Tennessee. So even within the southern mode, you have a, almost a bimodal nature to this severe weather with kind of a maximum down here into central Arkansas, a tail end Charlie of this severe weather event. And then further northeast near the Missouri boot heel, western Kentucky, western Tennessee, uh, some renegades trying to develop. Uh, the HRRR does show... Um, does hint at the development of renegades as far east as central Tennessee into south central Kentucky. And then it also flares up this mode into western Kentucky by about 22Z. So that's at about 5 p.m. So I'm going to have to decide here, do I want to hang back where you have a lot of veered flow, decent 0 to 3 kilometer uh, shear, uh, more instability down into central Arkansas, or do I want to be on the leading edge of this little subtle 850 low, this southern impulse out here across western Tennessee? with these renegades where you could even get a 30 knot low level jet there. Not a bad hodograph, even though you have a lot of westerly flow here. Uh, all of the winds uh, are focused here in this northeastern quadrant of the hodograph curve, uh, but you do have a southwest one kilometer wind at about 25 knots there. And then the mid levels of the troposphere increases 40 to 50 knots up there out of the southwest. Largely a straight line hodograph, but you do have a little bit of cyclonic curvature within the shear vectors uh, that make up this photograph, and that is going to allow just a bit of a low-level shear to get carved out of that profile. And we are getting some breaks in the clouds. I'm looking out here out the window in Conway, Arkansas, definitely some breaks in the clouds. Uh, that's going to allow robust surface-based instability to develop. Here's your low-level cape forecast by the HRRR at 22Z. Still plenty of low-level instability uh, here across eastern Arkansas into western Tennessee uh, for this severe weather event. Not as much up in the northern mode here across western Ohio, uh, but still sufficient uh, to develop uh, uh, and ha uh, plenty of surface based instability to uh, have tornadoes up there, uh, even though the wind shear is quite modest. Uh, and then as you go a little closer to sunset, you start to lose that low level cape. See the evolution of the low level jet as you get a little closer to sunset intensifies across central Ohio, but that low-level jet just hanging on down here in the southern mode across western Tennessee, expanding a little bit as you get closer to zero Z, uh, but that low-level jet departing northeastern Ohio, outrunning the instability axis uh, a little bit later. So I do think that this is going to be maintained a slight risk with that 5% tornado threat. You do have a little bit of an acceleration of the low-level jet here across western Tennessee at about 8 p.m. Not expecting a big nocturnal event, but this is the last severe weather event with these changing of the seasons. Uh, fall is building in. If you're in the southern plains, after those supercells last night across Oklahoma City, you certainly felt um, uh, are feeling the fall temperatures so far this morning behind those storms. More hail impacted southern Oklahoma City as well. Microbursts, likely some wind damage out there additionally. And here is the surface map showing you that advancing cold front. Temperatures falling down into the 50s there in central Oklahoma, mid 50s in Oklahoma City Metro. Uh, here in Arkansas, 70s uh, as well, just ahead of that front that is moving off to the southeast. Uh, but temperatures falling. Finally, a taste of fall there, central Oklahoma, after days of supercell storms during this active second season. And it does look like this cold front is going to push some moisture deep into the Gulf of Mexico, probably take about 7 to 10 days, and another big-time high-amplitude trough to tap into that moisture, pull it back northward, and then we'll have uh, Tornado Alley awaken again during the second season. But right now we are monitoring... Uh, this storm just to the north of Russellville, it does have a special weather statement on it. It is sub-severe, uh, but many of the models do show that storm intensifying. And I'm not sure if this is going to be that central Arkansas motor, if this is actually going to mature into the renegades that eventually arrive out into western Tennessee uh, there near the Missouri boot heel. And then it's possible that along the front, another storm could develop off to the south 
Uh, but definitely looks like it's trying out near Dover, Arkansas. It still is a forward propagating type of a storm here. Uh, still just a little bit elevated. Uh, it's not uh, located within that surface base instability, but it does have an elevated supercell structure with it. Uh, you can certainly see a little elevated mesocyclone here to the southwest of Dover. That could lead to some stronger damaging winds within the RFD portion of the storm, some enhanced westerlies within that RFD, maybe some larger hail as well. So once this reaches that instability, uh, this is likely going to intensify into a severe storm as it moves toward northeastern Arkansas. So me being down here in the Conway area, I'm likely going to position out here near the Searcy, Bald Knob area up toward Jonesboro, get out ahead of this storm, allow it to intensify by afternoon, and then once it reaches northeastern Arkansas, I do think that there is a chance of tornado potential. And it might be that the tornado potential peaks during early to mid-afternoon with these storms. You can already see uh, some renegades trying to develop down near the Batesville area there as well. Uh, so it is possible that we could be more of an early afternoon uh, type of a, a severe wet, a tornado threat before uh, those uh, low-level winds begin to veer just a little bit. Let's look at the uh, mesoanalysis. Right now you're talking about 100 0 to 1 kilometer shear. There is a lot of convective inhibition right now uh, that this uh, storm is moving over. And let me shift away from radar to show you the uh, current conditions and assess some near-term tornado potential here. So here you can see the uh, current uh, analyzed surface base surface based cape uh, by the uh, RAP model. And you can see most of the surface base instability is over southern Arkansas, but it is rapidly building northward, trying to meet up with this convective line. That supercell structure just to the north of Russellville. You've got a lot of west release uh, up across the uh, Missouri boot hill. Not ready yet up into western Kentucky. Starting to get some southerly winds, though, in advance across western Tennessee. Uh, that instability there streaming up the lower Mississippi Valley. Valley. But a lot of... A lot of uh, Convective inhibition in blue. That's the shallow stable layer at the low levels of the atmosphere across central and northern Arkansas. So that's how we do have this elevated supercell to the northeast of Russellville. Sub-severe right now, but in a couple hours, you can see that surface base instability is not an issue. So by late morning to around the noon hour, certainly, and then look at that front, finally convex there again, uh, reinvigorates that convection. So it looks like the wrap tries to kill that Russellville storm. That's probably not going to happen because with the, uh, the, the building of that surface space instability, I do expect that storm to become severe again across northeastern Arkansas. And then you get closer to about 1 p.m., and it looks like a reinvigoration of that convection. But within those westerly surface winds near Russellville to the west of Little Rock, northwest of Little Rock as well, and you can see the um, wrap hinting at that cluster of renegades in northeastern Arkansas toward the Missouri boot heel, where you have a little bit more southerly winds right near the lower Mississippi River Valley, too, uh, near the Arkansas-Tennessee border. You have a little bit more in the way of due southerly winds. So I think that I want to target those renegades here in western Tennessee, where you have just a little bit more low-level wind shear. You have slightly more westerly surface winds. I probably want to stay ahead of that HP beast down there, the three kilometer shear monster down into central Arkansas that reinvigorates that develops near the I 40 corridor along that cold front, according to the NAM model. So that's what I think I want to do. Let's take a look really quick and see if the HRRR agrees. So this would probably be the Russellville storm at about 16Z. See what this latest HRRR does. It really does not reinvigorate that, but instead, develops uh, just to the east of Fort Smith, back toward the Clarksdale area by about 1 p.m., uh, reinvigorates uh, this convection along the cold front. So it's not that current storm up near Russellville. It continues to push east and might help contribute uh, to the uh, cluster of renegades in northeastern Arkansas. By 19Z, so about 2 p.m., that's when these start to mature, northeastern Arkansas into the Missouri boot hill, northwestern portion of Tennessee as well. You do have this convection going up along the front, but the surface winds largely shift to a westerly direction there behind that prefrontal trough. So we want to be ahead of the prefrontal trough. You have the uh, immediate cold frontal boundary with the temperature shift, and then out ahead of that, you have the prefrontal trough where there's the wind shift associated with the front like this. 
And even though it does intensify this storm back toward Little Rock along the front, it's likely going to be more of a hail producer, strong damaging winds. But you really want to be on these renegades in the Missouri boot heel, northwestern Tennessee, western Kentucky out here by about 20Z, 2, 3 p.m., 1 to 4 p.m. type of a time frame out here. Northeastern Arkansas, southeastern Missouri, western Kentucky. That's definitely the target to get a lucky noodle out there. Northwestern Ohio also could be a decent target, west central to northwestern Ohio. Uh, that's at about 4, 3, 4 p.m. central time. Uh, but it does look like, in general, overall, uh, the HRRR definitely likes the uh, supercellular mode here within that southern mode. And even when you get those veered out surface winds and you get just enough speed shear to get tornadoes, but plenty of bulk shear for supercell storms, it seems like northeastern Arkansas, the Missouri Boot Hill, western Kentucky, this region here, it is kind of notorious for squeezing out tornadoes with these setups. So I think that the southern mode looks a little bit more favorable on these latest models. Uh, that's uh, what I'm going to be targeting today. I'm going to be streaming live during this storm chase as well. Uh, so definitely stay tuned. Uh, I'll be streaming live storm chase mode. Facebook supporters, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be able to do uh, this live uh, storm chasing like this. So thank you so much. I'm going to be doing lots of Q&As and reinvigorate. I'm using that word a lot during this live briefing, but I'm going to get back to the storm chase EDU content once I get to my mom's house during this fall as well uh, with those live briefings. And then I'm going to be doing a lot of skiing too this winter. So it does look like by about 6 p.m. that tornado threat spreads into western Kentucky, northwestern Tennessee there. And then the main front arrives to the Mississippi River by about 7 p.m., bringing that severe weather threat through the Memphis area. So after about 7 p.m., then that severe weather should subside by this time. Uh, the severe weather threat has ejected off to the northeast in Ohio, so that low-level wind shear and that impulse lifts over uh, into southern Ontario, western Lake Erie by this time. And then we have this convective line marching through western Tennessee, closing in on the Jackson area by about 8 p.m. So that looks like uh, what's going to happen here severe weather-wise. Um, I'm like in the southern mode of this bimodal setup. Uh, Storm Prediction Center does have a 5% tornado threat across both of these modes. That includes western, northwestern Ohio, and down here, the southern mode across northeastern Arkansas, western Kentucky, western Tennessee, Missouri Boot Hill region as well. So I think that this is going to be kind of an early afternoon type of a chase, early to mid-afternoon, and then most of those winds, surface winds, veer a little bit too much to have a robust tornado threat. So I'm going to hit the road here shortly. Go live as well once I get on these storms. I'm going to keep an eye on that Russellville storm as it moves into northeastern Arkansas. And then I'm going to wait for the development of these renegades across uh, the Missouri boot heel, northeastern Arkansas, western Kentucky, and western Tennessee as well. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in to my weather report. Never stop chasing. <laughs>